All right, so we're going to start off um, our next explorations looking at um, something that is kind of kinetic in nature. So what I want to show you is how to respond to um, other influences by creating dynamic facade-like components. Um, we're going to we're not really going to create like a a facade per se. I want to first walk you through um, some of the logic of quadrilaterals and and sort of reconstructing them into. Um, like a panelized facade system. And then I also want to introduce some other methods of modifying that system. So um, one of which is gonna be um, rotation, right? So we haven't done any sort of rotation yet, so it's gonna be a bit of a foreign concept. But you'll be able to do really cool, unique things like these kinetic facades that are gonna run um, back and forth. You can create panelized facades that are, this is actually one of the ones that we emulated in our um, facade design exploration. It's just these little plates that hang on a on a rail and it goes back and forth. So um, yeah, this is all stuff that you're gonna be able to do. Um, all right, let's jump into uh, Grasshopper. So uh, the way that I wanna do this is to use um, cell-based geometry. And that means basically it, it'll, we're gonna have a grid um, and on that grid, we're gonna make sure that we're isolated on the grid's um, cells. Meaning when I say that, like each cell has its own four points, right? If, if you just create a square grid using the grid feature, you're going to get points that are like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? We don't want that. What we want is for each point on this cell to be 0, 1, 2, and 3. Does that make sense? Do you know the difference? You should know the difference by now. Um, so it doesn't matter whether or not we use a surface that we've generated and then subdivide it, or if we use the, um, the grid. What I want you guys to be practicing is using defined uh, geometrical systems. So it's not always going to be just like a straight um, surface. So let's take a look at... Um, Let's actually create kind of a warped surface. I think that's the best way to do this. So in Rhino, let's do a line. I'm going to copy that line. That did not copy. Elevate. Let's rotate this one that way and this one that way. Loft them and we're good to go. Off to the races, as they say. <clears throat> All right, so what's the first thing we do? Right, reference that surface. And then I'm going to hide that surface. There we go. Um, so by now, you should know how to subdivide this thing. So I'm going to blast through this part pretty quickly. I think you all, some of you may even be ahead of me already. Um, we're going to go to surface, utility, um, and isotrim. Yes, I am. Thank you. Um, surface, utility, isotrim, and math, domain. And we're going to do divide domain squared. This is that wonderful triangle. And... Uh, Let's put some sliders, 0 to 20. I have no idea how many I'm going to use. Copy, paste. We're going to go over here. Um, and I'm going to start off with kind of a lower number of subdivisions. OK. So we're going to take this system, and we're going to break it down into triangles. So we're going from quadrilateral system to a triangular system. Um, it's different than the, the grid-based um, triangular system because it's not going to create something that is uh, nested triangles. It's actually just going to be quadrilaterals that are split in half across the diagonal. Um, so to do that, we're going to actually need to extract the cell points and reconstruct those cell points into um, into triangular cells. Um, so let's go to um, surface analysis and let's grab deconstruct BREP. And then 
then feel free to turn off the stuff before. And before I go forward, I'd like you to get caught up with me here. So I'm going to pause for a moment. All right, next up. Um, so I want you guys to be aware of um, what we're working on. So we are going to work on the faces um, because, well, actually, we can work with the vertices. Let's work with the vertices. Um, let's do this. Um, go to um, set list and list item. And I want you to look at that pattern. So um, the pattern is showing only these 12 points, not the points on the outside. Why is that? Hmm? Why is it only selecting those 12 points? What? I don't know what you're saying. Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, yeah, kind of. So there are 12 cells, but why is this list item only grabbing those particular ones? That's what I want to say. That's what I want you to understand what's happening. And it has to do with that. Right. Uh, yes and yes. Um, the first index that's being uh, taken is index number zero which happens only in one place on all cells. And that happens to be, if this was cell number one, it happens to be here. So cell number one here, cell number two here, cell number three here, so on and so forth, right? All the way across the whole pattern. So um, we can utilize a whole bunch of list items to grab each individual point and then start remapping them to each other. Um, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Um, OK, so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to create a param on this thing or a panel on this thing that just says 0. And then I'm going to copy and paste this configuration four times. So I'm going to have a 0, a 1, a 2, and a 3. So I've got my zeros, my ones, my twos, and my threes. You can't really see the systems because they're overlaying each other, but they're going to basically just kind of rotate around the whole perimeter of the thing. So here's what I want you to understand. Um, if I were to, and you don't have to do this part, I just want to show you. Let me turn this off. So it's like here's our grid system. Um, hide these. Here's our grid system. Um, we, we have, um, I'm going to do like a curve with a line, so a uh, curve primitive line. And let's see if I connect 0 and 1, what it does, right? It creates an edge across that side. Um, if I connect 1 and 2, it goes to the other side. If I connect 2 and 3, it goes to the other side. So um, I have my 1 and 2, 2 and 3, so on and so forth, um, all the way across. So that creates 1, 2, 3 sides of that square. And I need one more uh, to go from um, 3 back to 1. So this one's kind of the outlier. Um, that gives us all four sides of the cell. But you may ask, why the heck did you just completely reconstruct something that was already there in the first place? Does anyone have an answer for that? Why did I reconstruct something that was already there in the first place? Huh? Did you say <laughs> Yeah, I know it is. That's why I asked it. Um, so, 
So basically what this afforded us the opportunity to do was to um, to basically have like these individual lines that we can recreate surfaces from because we can't create a quadrilateral surface off of this. Be well, we could, it'd be warped, but we'd have to do it with like a network, network surface or a patch or something like that. Um, but what I'm gonna do with this is um, break it down into triangles. So I don't only need the um, line from um, each particular side, I also need a diagonal line. So where there was all of my four original edge lines, that's these, I'm also going to have one that goes from zero to two. So that gives me something that sort of crosses through the middle, which I can then begin to reconstruct things from. So this is the one that is my diagonal. I'm going to um, call it the um, cell diagonal and make it a really cool um, shade of some other color so it sticks out. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now we've got lines that are representing triangular cells and we just need to reconstruct them into panels. Um, so we're gonna go to um, surface, freeform, and we're gonna do four point surface, or not four point surface, sorry. Um, we're gonna do boundary surface. And boundary surface is going to allow us to um, create triangles by just inputting different edges. So if I wanna use, obviously I'm gonna use the middle one. Um, I can use maybe this first one and then probably not, well, maybe this side one. Let's put the first one in here, and let's put the second one in there, and let's just put the third one in here. There you go. But if I wanted that third one to be a different line as an edge, I could use this one instead, which probably won't do anything. Um, the last one will, because that's going to be on the other side. Oh, no, it didn't. Why didn't it? So we have this one, we have that one, which is the bottom. Oh, so this one has to be this side. Does that make sense why this one works? Because we had the diagonal, and then we selected this edge as our second line, and the only other edge that would have worked to create a surface is this one. That's why that configuration works. If we wanted to go to the other side, we'd have to use the other two surfaces. Um, so if I disconnect this one and disconnect this one and use the bottom two, that'll create a surface on the other side. Voila. What questions do you have? Okay, I'm going to pause here, let you get caught up, um, and then we're going to move into rotational stuff after this.